Good morning. Today we're looking at section six, section five, second derivatives and concavity, out of chapter four, symbolic differentiation, out of business calculus with Excel. The first derivative tells us the slope of the line we would get by zooming in. The second derivative tells us about the curvature or the x squared term of the parabola we would get by zooming in. The sign of the second derivative will tell us is the function bending up or bending down. Similarly, that when we were looking at parabolas, we looked at the sign of the coefficient of x squared to see whether it was bending up or bending down. This will give us a second test for when critical points are maximums or minimums. In chapter six, we're going to generalize the second derivative test to a test for functions of several variables, one of the important things in the business world is asking about minimum and maximum and being able to generalize that to functions of several variables. The second derivative is the derivative of the derivative. So two primes on f of x, it's the derivative with respect to x of the derivative with respect to x of f of x. There are a couple of notations we can use for that when we where the derivative with respect to x, the square goes on the top, and it's dx squared, not d squared x squared. We could bring the f in and make the whole thing a function of x, or make it something concerning y. When we shift to notability, we'll do some computational examples. It's worthwhile looking at the test. If the second derivative is positive, the example would be x squared at x equals 0. The derivative is 2x. The second derivative is 2. That's positive. Then we're bending up and we have a local minimum. So if the first derivative is 0 and the second derivative is positive, we have a local minimum. If the first derivative is 0 and the second derivative is negative, our example is minus x squared, then we're going to have a local maximum. If the second derivative is 0, for example, with x cubed, x to the fourth, minus x to the fourth at zero, the test fails. We don't know whether it's a local minimum, local maximum, or neither. And if first derivative is not zero, the test does not apply. With any of these functions at one, knowing what the second derivative is without checking the first derivative doesn't tell you about maximums or minimums. If the second derivative is positive, we bend up. If the second derivative is negative, we bend it. As is my practice, I'll do examples, but not the same examples as in the text. So I want to look at the second derivative. I want to look at examples, and we're going to start with easy examples. So I mentioned y equals x squared. We'll call that f of x. And if I look at f prime of x, that's 2x f prime of x equals 0 at x equals 0 f double prime of x is 2 f double prime of x is greater than 0 always so the function is always bending up. If I look at a graph of it, I have y equals x squared. I'm going to have a critical point at 0. This is a minimum. For the next example, let's look at a maximum and take a slightly less trivial function. I'm going to have f of x equal minus x plus 2 squared. f prime of x, I take the derivative of that using the chain rule is minus 2 times x plus 2. The second derivative is equal to minus 2. 
the function, we know what that looks like. At x equals minus 2, I'm going to have a critical point, and I'm going to bend down from there. So f double prime of x is less than 0 always. So f double prime of x is concave down. f double prime of x equals 0 at x equals minus 2, we have a max there. Note, second derivative test does not need a closed interval for the first derivative test we needed to look at a closed interval and we included the endpoints and the critical points here we're just looking at the critical points for comparison If I look at y equals x minus 1 quantity cubed, the graph of that is going to have a critical point at x equals 1. f prime of x will equal 3 times x minus 1 squared. And at x equals 1, that 0 but it's going up on one side and going down on the other side, so it's neither a maximum or a minimum. And so that gives us an example where we have a critical point that isn't a maximum or a minimum, and the second derivative winds up being zero. Warning. The second derivative can be zero at a max or a min. We just know the test fails. And so if I'm looking at f of x equals x plus 3 to the fourth, 1, 2, 3, that's going to look like it's trying to be a parabola, but it's going to go up more steeply. And we have a minimum. g of x equals x minus 2 to the fourth is a maximum at there. And so the second derivative can be 0. And we don't know what happens. It's either maximum or minimum or neither. We don't know simply by looking at the second derivative. We need more information still. If the second derivative <coughs> is positive, the graph is concave up. Where concave up means that if I connect two points, I'm above it. We connect above. And one of the things to be careful of, we can have down graph and concave up.
And so a graph like this, y equals 0.9 to the x, is concave up, it's bending up. but decreasing. To find regions of concavity, find zeros of second derivative and test regions. Consider f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared. If we want to think about the graph of it, this is equal to x squared times x minus 3. So at 3, at x squared, it's going to bounce, and it's going to cross again at, at x equals 3. So when I look at it, the first derivative, f prime of x, is 3x squared minus 6x, and f double prime of x is 6x minus 6, which equals 6 times x minus 1. So what that's saying is at 1, we're going to shift from concave down to concave up. Notice the change in concavity happens between the maximums and minimums, not at either one of them. So I'm looking at that, and this gives me a region of concave down from minus infinity to 1 is concave down. And from 1 to plus infinity is concave up. In finance, second derivative measures volatility of investment. So it's something that's used in practical cases. So in general, if I'm looking at a second derivative, so that if I was looking at f of x equals x squared 1.06 to the x, then f prime of x, using my product rule, is 2x times 1.06 to the x plus ln of 1.06, 1.06 to the x, times x squared. If I wanted to do a second derivative, I would find it useful to do some algebraic simplification and say I have 1.06 to the x times 2x plus x squared natural log of 1.06. And then when I look for the second derivative, that's going to be the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. It's going to be ln of 1.06 times 1.06 to the x times 2x plus x squared times ln of 1.06 plus 1.06 to the x times the derivative of the second, which is 2, plus ln of 1.06, that's a constant, times 2x. And so that computes the second derivative for me. 
all of the first derivative rules, we simply apply them two times. That gives us an idea of the second derivative. Thank you.